We came across Ella Briggs Baumfeldt when we were researching something else, the work of Otto Neurath and what he saw as happy housing in the Midlands in the United Kingdom. Discovering her has been difficult and as the discovery developed we found we knew less and less about her and she became effectively a spectre. She has a predictable and unexceptional early life, a life typical of a Jewish girl in Vienna in the late 19th century. A life that would have been expected to lead to marriage and to children. Her education includes time at the Viennese School for Women's Education. Her life doesn't develop in this way. She has a desire to enter a profession, almost all of which were barred to her. She became interested in interior design. In 1903 she travels to New York where her brother Morris had founded the New German Theatre and was the editor of the Neue Frei Press and she did some interior design work but there are no examples of this work. In 1907 she marries Walter Briggs and in 1912 they're divorced. Returning to Vienna she studies architecture at the Technological University under Theodor Fischer as well as drawing classes under the artist Coleman Moser. She qualifies as an architect in 1921 and becomes the first woman member of the Austrian Association of Engineers and Architects. She does designs for the Pestalozzihof in Vienna, including units for single people, which was unusual at the time, as well as for flats and houses in Berlin. The aesthetics of these were basically Bauhaus. Returning to New York in 1920, she works as an architect in both New York and in Philadelphia. For whom we do not know, but possibly for Kahn and Gregory. Maybe the more famous Louis Kahn. She produced a substantial number of housing designs and writes for both professional and popular journals about housing. Bills of lading suggest that many of these designs were sent by ship to the Vienna Kunstlerhaus but these appear since to have disappeared. She visits Italy on a commission to write a book on architectural photography. During that trip she's arrested as a spy. A number of photos attributed to her are in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Only one of these is clearly by her. In Vienna in 1930 she continues to design and write about housing and in Berlin works on the 1931 Berlin Expedition, Exhibition. Her role seems to be about how to use photographs in exhibition spaces, which make her an early exponent of exhibition design philosophy. She flees to England in 1936, is interned and is only given English citizenship in 1947. She works with the Austrian philosopher and soci sociologist Otto Neurath, on the planning of the new Stolon estate in Wolverhampton. He had been employed there as consultant on human happiness. Neurath dies in 1947 and Ella continues to work in Stolon designing a series of 160 houses. She also works alongside Neurath's wife Maria Reidermeister. Professional recognition comes in 1948 when she's made licentiate of the Royal Institute of Borough Surveyors. For five years between 1948 and 1953, she helps her brother Fritz with compensation claims for restoration of properties and effects stolen by the Nazis. This claim seems to have been unsuccessful. From now on, her life becomes less and less clear. She seems to have a spectral existence manifested through the lives and works of others. The Lady Vanishes. This is her house in London. We know she practised architecture at least from 1953. We know she worked on social housing projects in a number of London boroughs. But there seems to be no information of where she worked or whether she practised on her own or in a group. She has a room named after her at the University of Vienna. She has a type font named after her, Bella Black. The artist Isa Rosenberg designs an exhibition about Ella entitled Four Shadows for E.B. One of the few documented images of her work is, strangely, 
given that most of her work was on housing. A design for a margarine factory, published in the appropriately named Forgotten Architects. There is a Facebook page with her name, Ella Briggs Bamfelt, but of course it does not reply to offers of friendship. Requests for information to organisations interested in Jewish refugees from Nazi Germany coming to the UK. There is little information. In fact, there, is, there are no replies from those requests for information by email or other ways of communicating. For 18 months we have delved into the life of Ella Briggs Baumfeld and have found that as we move through her life things get more and more vague and inconclusive. We are haunted by this.